Today on the Rumors Comedy Cast, Mike Lawrence talks to Dan Verville about working with John Oliver, compares Darth Vader to the wheezing kid in Malcolm in the Middle, and reveals a little-known Lion King fact. Music by Uncle Seth. Follow us on iTunes and Twitter, and remember to share with your friends on Facebook, at Rumors Comedy. Hey everybody, welcome to Rumors Comedy Cast, episode 14. We are here with Mike Lawrence, hey. who's at the club this week. Hello. Hey, how's how it going? You? Good, how are you? I'm good. You can follow him on Twitter, at the Mike Lawrence. We are Rumors Comedy. Follow us at Rumors Comedy. We're also on iTunes now, so subscribe to the podcast and all that good stuff. Share it with your friends, because it's taken off. You want to get in on the ground floor. Uh, we're looking for a title sponsor as well, so let me know if you're interested. Anyways, Mike, apologize for the whole, uh, what do you, you got the old uh, gum straw. Yeah. Well, you know, I was being a professional. <laughs> I, by I'm, not chewing gum during the podcast, and then you were being an unprofessional by pointing it out. Yeah, well, I, I noticed the good really. dynamic we have there. It's good. Yeah, it's good <laughs> comedic back and forth. But no, so my I've my never personality seen that is happen. that of a iceless diet coke, and yours is that of a Michelob Ultra. We we've already <laughs> defi- we should just have the podcast between the two beverages. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm old Mikey McGumstraw, and <laughs> and I'm a exceptional light beer. Yeah, which is incorrect. Oh, that's weird. Well, welcome uh, to, to Winnipeg. Obviously, your first time here. Yeah. yeah. What do you think? I you like be, it. To be honest. I, I, like, I like Winnipeg. Yeah. It, it, has, it has a sadness to it. Um, <laughs> we were talking like how dirty all the cars look. Yeah. They all just, like, if God queefed, and it just got <laughs> everywhere. That's it. it. It's really amazing. <laughs> just, like, like, there's a certain type of, like, dirtiness to the like the, the cars kind of seem like some of the people where they're like i could make myself better but you know why you know <laughs> well that's yeah like a sense of defeat it's exactly well because it's just no point of washing your car because you know it's gonna snow or melt again yeah so we're all just like fuck it but even like Leave through it. the summer you're like yeah <laughs> look it's july now but you know november's coming soon and so is death <laughs> i don't know what's gonna get me first Probably death. Probably, yeah. I had an ex named Beth. The two things I'm afraid of are death and Beth. <laughs> so you have your own, uh, you have your own podcast too. This is yeah. your first uh, nerd of nerd of mouth. Uh huh. And uh, you guys have been doing that since 2010. You said. Yeah. Yeah. And so how many like, how often? I know you said you had to record like three apps in a week because you're going to be on the road. We how, release one a week. Yeah. yeah. So how often do you have to like pre-record? Ah, uh, sometimes it, it's gotten better, like, because we used to focus on, like, a lot of nerd news and, like, mm-hmm. up-to-date stuff, but now, like, we're more into, like, weirder stuff. Like, we had someone who was, like, a historical reenactor and, and it, like, pretended to be, like, from colonial times with, with all of her friends. Um, so were they in character on the podcast? No, 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 no. <laughs> She's because that would be the weirdest. <laughs> no, no. But that was what was cool. Like she had a self awareness about it, but also like a genuine joy, which made it like you know cool. Yeah. yeah, she was nice. And so we we have more stuff like that, like theater nerds and band nerds, and mm-hmm. and just like we still talk about comic books and video games and wrestling. That's the stuff I love. But yeah. we we try to branch out too sometimes to just different areas of nerdiness. Yeah, like we did an episode on the Oscars and mm-hmm. on the Grammys and we analyzed Katy Perry's Super Bowl performance, which that's the thing like everyone watches that um well not here cuz it's not a hockey game, but like <laughs> everyone watches it. <laughs> you watched it. it the yeah, charts. I know, I know. <laughs> I like those beach balls. They they look fun. Like <laughs> those the the, the the Katy Perry beach balls, like their their face like that's that's what Winnipeg feels like to me. Like <laughs> they're kind of smiling, but not but really. Not. And if you look close enough, you see how broken the teeth are. <laughs> you can see the pain inside. Oh man! I, You're like, no, it's not. No, I've just, I've good. just, I've just never been to a city that is an island surrounded by land. <laughs> it's you know what? That's that's kind of fair. I mean, it's we're yeah. pretty ice. I mean, we're isolated in a certain sense. Like. Like, you guys saw The Walking Dead, and you're like, we want that, but without the zombies. <laughs> no, we still have zombies. Yeah. <laughs> Do they actually care? Okay, I had this debate today with somebody on The Walking Dead. Yeah. Um, I don't watch the show, and I feel like I'm left out of society because of this. I want to apologize to everyone who watches the show. Sorry. Not into it right now. I will be maybe later. After i got to finish Lost first. But anyway. Sorry. That's how I feel after I work out. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but they did, is it true they never call... The zombies, zombies? Yeah, they're always walkers. 
Walkers. Yeah. Or is we there got other walkers? Like, or I think biters might be on Walking Dead. That's just a general trend in like, like it's the fast zombies and the the not calling them zombies. I think I think what it is is like, they feel like if they do that, that it's like an homage to just zombie movies. But if they don't, then it's like more cool and hipster. Yeah. Know? So they're saying, yeah, we're we're so self aware of what we're doing. It's like people who say beverage instead of drink. Like, have oh. you ever heard someone just say beverage in conversation? I That's weird. I have not, and I, I'm I would like a beverage, hate please. hate myself the day I hear there that. There are walkers over there, you know? <laughs> that would not be a good cranberry song. Walkers, <laughs> walkers. Big cranberry fan? There yeah, you go. Yeah, Linger is a fantastic song. Yeah. And Dreams. Dreams is awesome. What was it? That was uh, Everyone Else is Doing It, So Why Can't We? Was that their album? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah, that was that was old school, though. That yeah. Was long t- you, uh, yeah. That this was just, long this just became the Chris Farley show from SNL. Yeah. Remember that time the Cranberries yeah, did, did an album? That was awesome. <laughs> it's got <down>! that! <laughs> <laughs> so you said something uh, during your set tonight. And I just wanted to clarify this. You said yeah. that you didn't like Star Wars. Now, is that fact, or are you just saying that? Oh, Misa is telling the truth. Yeah? Yeah. So you hate it? I don't hate it. I just think it's the most overrated thing ever. Like, one, it's not science fiction. There's nothing scientific about it. Um, it's fantasy. And, and so the people that can at least admit that, like, all right, we can then talk. I just think most people that love it were like raised on it at a really early age which is the point of the, the space balls joke that i do yeah. that like no i was raised on space balls so i love space balls i wasn't raised on star wars as no. much my part of my my star wars opinions i have two reasons for this one i saw the re-releases in the 90s when they came out in the theater yeah. yeah great year and me and my the special editions right that's mm-hmm. what they're called mm-hmm. so me and my friends we went to go see a new hope yeah and then and i'd seen like but like i saw parts of them on vhs but then my dad grounded me when empire came out empire records i also couldn't see the second stars <laughs> no um, <laughs> no but it, so i couldn't see empire strikes back and then the grounding was lifted by the time Return of the Jedi came out. So I saw one and three. I didn't see. You never saw Empire. No. Oh. And then and then I feel like after Jedi, which was fun but not like amazing, I'm like I don't even feel the need to see it now because now I've seen part three. I don't need to go back to part two. Oh, but you miss Hoth. Yeah, I guess so. Like Hoth, that was a key. Like Philip Seymour Hoffman. <laughs> Fucking Banthas everywhere. Oh, God. I'm just going to crawl in one and die. I don't know if there were Banthas on Hoth. Fucking we'll Bantha. Not a Bantha. A fucking Bantha. Philip Seymour a Hoffman. Goddamn Bantha. Goddamn. Um, so, so and I, then the other, the other thing yeah. is the first movie that I ever spent my own money on, which is a defining moment in a person's life. Oh, my God. I'm because scared. you work hard, you know, and this was obviously McDonald's. Uh, that was my first job, my first paycheck. What did I go see? I saw episode one, one. Uh, The Phantom Menace in 1999, and I, I felt, like, screwed over. Because I also, I didn't have the attachment other people did because of the lack of Empire. Yeah. And then, like, I went, I believe it came out on a Wednesday, and I went on a Thursday, and most of my other friends had already seen it, but knew it was bad, but were such fans that they were trying to see it enough times that they would be numb to it and realize it's good. And it never happened. I, I, my, one of my teachers in high school saw it nine times in that weekend, that first weekend. Okay, that's a little hardcore. Oh, yeah. And it's just like, but eventually it'll work. It, it doesn't. It doesn't work. It's no. terrible. I've seen it. Like, I'm a, obviously, I, the reason I brought that up is because I'm a huge Star Wars fan. And I think your argument about being, seeing it at a young age is really interesting. Yeah. Because it's true. Like, I remember when those came out in 97, I would have been... 11 years old. So, yeah, and then is, you're... If you look at, like, the individual elements of it, like, if you look at all the bits and pieces, a lot of it just isn't that good or cool. Like, one, Mark Hamill's not that great of an actor in it. He's kind of wooden. Um, two, Harrison Ford, he... 
He, you know, he, he does a good oh. job. He sticks the landing like like he's yeah. in a plane on a golf course. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he nails it. Yeah. He's okay. He's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is like the whitest way to have a plane crash, by the way. But um, but no, but what's, what's fascinating is, but like, I think, I think Raiders of Lost Ark is so much better than any of the Star Wars movies. Yeah. And I'd rather just watch Han Solo, like, fight Nazis than a guy who literally looks like a black penis. Like that with, with with that asthma problem. <laughs> He's literally the kid from Malcolm in the Middle. He's just Stevie, but grown he up. Is. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, there's there's moments of I it. Completely forgot about Stevie. Sorry, that's oh, yeah, really yeah. So is the industry. <laughs> um, but there are there are moments in it that that I I do like. Like my favorite Star Wars character by far is Salacious Crumb. Because yeah. one, he's the only Jew in all of Star Wars, and just because of because why? Why is he the only Jew? <laughs> um, he was he was a comedian. Like I I looked I looked him up on Wikipedia. Great site, by the <laughs> yeah, way. Check right. it out. And apparently, the way that he got hired was that he was the uh, he was Jabba was going to kill him. But he made Jabba laugh by like I guess he killed a dude, mm-hmm. and he was a, he was the jester. He's the jester in Jabba's court. And the idea that when the ship goes down and they die, that the comedian decides to stay with his Booker, is like the sweetest like thing <laughs> in comedy to me. You know, it's like he basically like you're working for a mob boss for like 15 years. That's basically like he just did like the worst corporate gig ever. You know? Yeah, of all time. Like you had to yeah. do a you're set just, after. Uh, like you had to follow. You had to follow the Sarlacc. You know. Yeah, you had to follow someone falling into the Rancor pit. Yeah. <laughs> and then the other the other thing uh, that that I always love the the thing that I love about Star Wars is that it's a galaxy long long ago, far far away, and the fat guy is named Porkins. Like, they don't even have pigs in Star Wars, but they found a way to call the fat guy Porkins. What was his first name? Jet Porkins or something? I think it's Neck Fat Porkins. Neck Fat Porkins. Nailed it. It might be Back Fat Porkins. I'm not sure. what Lucas was going for. Yeah, yeah. Chubba Gooding Jr. I'm pretty (laughs) sure it's... I'm sorry. Cuba Footing Jr. (laughs) You have very... Yeah, that's... Like, this is Star Wars heavy, but this is interesting. Oh, yeah, because yeah, yeah. like I yeah I've never uh, I mean most of my friends are like were VHS raised Star Wars kids. Oh yeah, and most so, of mine were too. Like to the point that they could quote it all. Yeah, and, and you know like all the and you read the books and you, the science oh, yeah. fiction part is interesting too. How it's actually just fantasy. You're shattering my dreams. On I do think podcast. Good God. I do think Force Awakens is gonna. I I think yeah, it's that's gonna, gonna be. I think it's gonna be the best one yet mm-hmm. uh, on a, on a film level. It won't have the nostalgia and connection to people. I think it will to kids growing up now. Like, I think that uh, Abrams' Star Trek movies were the best Star Trek ever. Yeah. Because he actually put action in them. You know, the characters were, you know, easily well-defined and quick. They weren't just talking all the time. Mm-hmm. And it's the ultimate fuck you to Shatner that he went with Nimoy. I love that. Instead like, that's of going awesome. to... Yeah. Nim- Nimoy was cooler. Yeah, way cooler. And he, his, well, obviously, I mean, his legacy is going to... It's just stronger, I feel, too. Like, it's... Yeah. Than Shatner. Like, I just think it's that thing of, like... It's like George Harrison, where, you know, some of the other Beatles will have ups and downs, but, like, George Harrison never, like, really embarrassed himself. Yeah. There was the thing, like, I was reading today because uh, Robin Thicke, you know, got uh, sued by the Whoa. Marvin Gaye estate yeah. and all that. And I didn't realize that George Harrison also did, and he lost the lawsuit, and then he did a song about the lawsuit that was like really tongue in cheek called this song and it's really awesome and it's like that's why you don't hear it that's why you don't see him as a laughing stock because he found a way to like handle it quickly and and awesomely and just bury it for himself and he's got yeah. so much integrity you're like yeah that's yeah awesome. and he never like let an untalented chick like take over you know <laughs> like look you can blow me but that that stays out of the studio <laughs> it's not coming in yeah, no offense. You're not to, on the record. No offense to Linda and Yoko, but you know they they could not sing. No, they were terrible. No, no. Um, that we should, I think we, I feel we should talk about your stand up a little bit or something. Okay. Um, because I I don't even know like where, or actually there's another thing I want to talk to you about because you you mentioned on your podcast you guys talk wrestling. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
Now, which Canada has a rich history in. Yeah, absolutely. Chris Jericho from Winnipeg. Yeah, the old Y2J. He actually went to the same college I went to. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And uh, but no, I I was a wrestling fan younger, and now it's hit or miss. And like I just know that like last WrestleMania was brutal or something happened. They put someone over who shouldn't have went over. Yeah, but they it, fixed it. This fixed year it. they're not, and people are really upset. <laughs> <laughs> well, because the thing is, is that the thing with pro wrestling is it is fake. Yeah. But what is real is the connection that we have, because unlike any other sport, you can't actually affect the outcome but in wrestling you're supposed to Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so it's like if we all cheer for the same guy over and over again he theoretically then is supposed to win because that's what we did and we built that and that's why wrestling's the best like you can boo a hockey team through all of their games they could still win every game yeah you know but with wrestling it's different but this year vince mcmahon decided that this like greasy haired douchebag Roman Reigns was going to be the champion and he's just slowly going to become the champion and nobody wants it. Mm-hmm. And so it's like why what what why am I watching this if me watching it has no effect on the outcome? Mm-hmm. And didn't he offer, like, free WWE Network or something? Or, like, he was trying oh, yeah, to yeah. Well, they're trying to be do that greasy too. and, like... Because if you look at, if you look at uh, Winnipeg's own Chris Jericho, yes. a part of the reason that people are fans of him is that you feel like you had an emotional investment in him from the beginning of his career, that you got to see him on WCW be, like, the goofy... Like, he was basically, like, the funniest open micer, you know? Yeah. And then he, you know, in a feud against Goldberg and, and all that stuff, he and, and the thing with the, was it uh, Dean Malenko, the thousand and one holds arm yeah. bar. And then he does that and goes on to the biggest national stage and, you know, beats The Rock in Austin. It's like, we did that. We chose that guy. To be the one. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and <laughs> no one chose Roman Reigns. So we feel like we're, Getting, we're being wasted. Yeah. See, I... I feel like, and I don't know if you agree with this, but I feel like back, I mean, the the when like Bret Hart and like Owen Hart and those guys were around, I, I feel like that was kind of wrestling's. I mean, everyone's gonna have their own glory days of wrestling. Yeah, but yeah. Like that was that was a good time. Now it was like critically in some ways because a lot of the matches were great because those guys were great, but that was the financially worst time in the company's history. They were losing a lot of money. Really? Yeah. I, I, no one really cares about Canadians except Canadians. It's, T- tough true. thing. Well, except, I remember except they built, Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> well, they built up that huge, uh, the huge USA versus Canada feud. Yeah. That got massive. Oh, yeah. One of the best uh, Canadian Stampede was 1997, and it was at, like, the Canadian Stampede that they have at Calgary every yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, the Calgary Stampede. And it yeah. was, uh, it, Stu Hart was in the front row with his face falling off and, and everyone, like, cheering them on. And it's, like, one of the best crowd reactions you've ever heard. Yeah. No, that was, and then the, they always had the brother versus brother. They had that a few times. That was 1994. Yeah, yeah. that was WrestleMania 10. Yeah, frick. So you remember the exact? Date oh of yeah, and then Owen's like, cutting oh a God. promo afterwards. He has like spit on his lip. It's really gross. <laughs> yeah, Owen. Owen is like, he's a guy that you like the more that you get older. And like, what happened? That, like, his death is proof that wrestling is the worst thing ever, and that you can never not feel shitty about watching it because. Like there's one that shouldn't have happened, and two, the show should not have gone on after that. Yeah, because it did continue. Yeah, and here's the weird thing: so the WWE Network has that pay per view, which is over the edge, 1999, and they don't show him falling, and they don't show uh, Jim Ross announcing on the air that he is dead, which they originally did. So you lose all the context, but what you do see is everyone like shaken and crying. Oh, my God. Because their friend just died, and they're wrestling in the ring that he literally fell in, and you can see the blood. And it's just that thing of, like, wrestling where it's like they're pride themselves, like, the show must go on. Like, wrestling, I'm pretty sure, was the first live event to happen after 9-11 in the United States. Really? Two days afterwards, I think it was, like, in Dallas or Houston, um, there was a SmackDown taping. And they were, and they like, roll it. Yeah, let's do it. And they're like, "This is what we do." So the show nice goes on. Down. It's like, yeah, when does it go from like you being like patriotic to you just wanting to make money? Because that's what it feels. That's like. That's the line. Yeah, it's what line scummy. is that? Like, I'd like to believe. Excuse me. I'd like to believe. Like, if you died tonight, 
we just stop the show. Yeah, He's yeah, it would be. Oh, I'd hope it'd be yeah, over. Yeah, like, yeah. no, keep rolling the podcast. Like, I still want to go up. <laughs> He's dead. No, no. Yeah, yeah. I read. Uh, I read Bret Hart's autobiography, and He's insane. He's insane. Uh, but I, I feel like, and I don't know. This is a crazy parallel to draw. Yeah. But sometimes I feel like. Professional wrestling and stand-up comedy aren't too far apart. From oh no, realms. that's why I love it because it's it, yeah, I found a new appreciation for it. I listen to so many more wrestling podcasts than comedy podcasts because it's like road stories. It's all the stuff that we deal with, but yeah. I'm not emotionally attached to it. Yeah, there's a distance that I get to keep. You know, it's you know tri- Triple H right now in the WWE is the booker who owns the comedy club. Mm-hmm. He puts himself in the best spots. <laughs> he yeah, buries he's like, new oh, talent. How's the crowd tonight? I'll, I'll do 15. You call that a good set? I'll show you a good set. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> I'll give someone a pedigree and call it a night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feature this. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's it's cool how it's so similar. Yeah, yeah. Like, just the, the stories and how... I don't know. I feel like some of the situations. And well, like, at the end of the day, what makes it the closest is that they're both performers who travel, you know, across the world who don't have any union representation at all. And that is a very strong connection that they're both independent contractors. And yeah. much like comedians, like when we try to get into SAG or the WGA to get protected, uh, wrestlers do too. Like a lot of wrestlers try to get into movies because then they're protected and, they're and they safe. get the health con- yeah. insurance and all that. Yeah. As we've seen with, it's uh, so hard for them to get insurance because of what they're doing every day. Oh yeah. Well, who was it that just had that big feud? It was, uh, he was like injured and they told CM him. Punk? Yeah. Yeah. Like that whole debacle. I mean like that's got to raise some eyebrows. Oh, they told him. Like, yeah. He realized he had a staph infection, but they just kept telling him to go out and yeah. have a good match. And, yeah. Go do it. Keep going. Yeah. It's pretty like, awful. Oh my God. Yeah, but anyways, we we digress. Um, yeah. so you you've done a lot of it. We're we're just gonna keep talking because this is yeah. freaking interesting. Um, like I said, you've done so you've done Mark Maron's podcast as well. Yeah. So this is kind of like Mark Maron's podcast right now, probably yeah, yeah, yeah. same feel. This is the peak of my career, <laughs> yeah. podcasting career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit it right here, Rumors episode fourteen. This is this is the greatest podcast that I've done in this part of North America. Yep. That's going to be our new disclaimer, I think. Yeah. So you work with Mark. Uh, you work with John Oliver as well. Mm-hmm. How How is John Oliver? The best. The like, best. He's he's my hero. He seems like one of those guys who like just gets it. Yeah. He he treats people incredibly. He's super funny. He's the nicest guy. He's shy. The fame hasn't gone to his head. You know how he's great is that. All of like the fame and success that he's had, he's just used to do more great work. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Where it's like he built himself up. Like he had to get a green card, like everybody else, when you know when he was hired for the Daily Show and everything. And then he made you know that that HBO show, which is incredible. That show is unreal. But that's like a brilliant career move, where it's like I'll build myself up on this show, and then when I leave, I'm gonna do the exact thing I always wanted to do, and that's what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if uh, enough people here, anyways, watch it. I think they do. I think it's picked up. Yeah, I think it's starting to be like like a Fallon in a sense. It's like a thing that people share online. That's where I kind of started watching it too. I saw like one of those on YouTube. It's like the John Oliver blah blah. blah. I'm like, oh, then I got looped in and I watched like ten in a row. And that's what's great is that what he does is that like the length of the piece is as long as it needs to be. Yeah, he he did like a fifteen minute piece on the Scottish referendum. <laughs> But it's the best piece could. you've ever seen on yeah. the Scottish referendum. And yeah. it, but it's but there's all punchlines. It's all funny. But you're also learning something important. So when you did, worked with him, did you do you guys write together? Or did no, you like, no, no. You just. But he watched my sets a yeah. lot. He was really like encouraging, and That's... he gave me my first uh, shot on TV. He took me on the road with him. I mean, he's the reason that I became a working comic. You know, he wow. like I was. I was like unemployed and and really struggling, and you know he he made me who I am. Man, some deep shit. <laughs> that is super deep. Yeah, him, uh, Tom Papa, um, who hired me to work on a TV pilot, and then uh, Mark Marin, who you know had yeah. me open for him and helped me a lot. So those, I, I mentioned them all in my album as my comedy dads, mm-hmm. just because those guys like allowed me to to make the transition from, you know, struggling to pro. And now 
you know, Chris Hardwick has been really great for me. I'm working with him, and you know, that's awesome. I've been on that midnight a few times, so yeah. it's been great. Yeah, I mean, nice. that's comedy is you know the goal of finding people to believe in you and taking a chance. <laughs> mm-hmm. And just yeah, using those chances when you get them, and just driving. yeah, and that's why it's like that. Sometimes like you feel bad, or like you you know someone didn't like your set. I can't think of any specific examples. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. But you know, but then it's like, but then like when you find the people who do believe in you and that do love you, like that's that thing. Like you know, you want to please everyone. You want to kill in front of everybody every time, and it's like it's unrealistic. Like it's a goal you've set for yourself. I never want someone yeah. to leave unhappy but at the same time if the people who believed in me the most and loved me the most were the ones who like actually did something about it like that's that's all you can hope for yeah because yeah you're never gonna hit you're never gonna hit a shoot 100 percent. here's what's you here's what's, try to but here's what's weird about stand-up comedy like we are given more pressure than any other art form at all um because you look at you look at if you go to see a comedy movie and let's say you laugh 10 times through an hour and a half. Now they're usually a two-hour movie. You had a great time. Mm -hmm. And you remember the moments you laughed. Mm -hmm. But if you go see stand-up comedy and there's two minutes in that 50-minute set that you didn't laugh, you feel cheated or disappointed. Yeah, you know, People should like watch it the way that they see comedy movies that, you know, it's like just stand-up like... We don't get to have lulls as much. No, you have to be hitting you know, your. You can watch a comedy where there's ten minutes where they're not even attempting a joke, but in um, you know uh, stand up, it's got to be hitting every single second. Yeah, and if it's not, then you build this weird awkward vibe in the room, yeah. and then you're like, oh, now I got to dig deep and try to win all these people back. When yeah, you're like I didn't do anything wrong. But I always, I, you know, I always love it. And it's like the connection that you make with people. Like the highs, I've always outweighed the lows. You mm-hmm. know, like yeah, like for every one person that complains, there's a ton of people that are happy. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like there was a guy tonight. It was like, ah, you made my birthday. And like, that's awesome. Yeah. You, you can't know, beat that's that. all you can like, hope for. Yeah. Or when someone comes up to you and tells you about like a tag that you, there's like, yeah, I love that tag. Like, and you're like, yeah, you got that because that's. Oh, yeah. yeah. There was a girl last night who um, I do a joke about the Lion King and how the real villains in Lion King are the parents who named their child Scar. And she was like, you know, actually, uh, it's Prince Taka uh, is his original name, uh, which means garbage (laughs) in Swahili, which is in the Lion King novelization. Oh, my God. And, And I just was like, look, I've had people tell me that before. You are right. But the majority of audiences haven't read the book that was inspired by the movie The Lion King. <laughs> the novelization of The Lion yeah. King. I was like, yeah. if I get to a point where this happens three times in a row, I'll stop the joke. Or I'll write a really good Prince Taka joke. Yeah, you'll have to write a really good Prince Taka joke. Yeah. I think that's the key. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, well, if you guys, uh, if you want to come see Mike Lawrence, you should. Because he's got Lion King jokes. Please. He's, uh, he's please got see my show. He's a joke. And just come check him I'll out. I'll make you laugh. Please. Oh, we. Please. Follow him on Twitter. At For the love the of God, Mike see Lawrence. the boy show. <laughs> Follow me at DV Comedy and come check out Rumors. This has been the Rumors Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. It was a blast. Let's, we'll pound yeah. it like you do. All right. Till next time. Frick, nice. we could have talked for another two hours. Yeah. Thank okay. you, studio. <laughs> Woo! All right. Okay, I didn't really like that first take. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Yeah. <laughs>